Have you ever wanted to search through a long YouTube video for keywords or topics? On the mobile app, this is a built-in feature, but it's not available on desktop, and there's no way to search an entire channel. There's a tool called YouTube Download that allows you to download YouTube videos, and I made a video using this tool called Bootleg YouTube Premium. In addition to downloading videos, it can also scrape subtitles from the videos. This gives us the ability to build a search engine exclusively for YouTube videos. And in a way, we can also use YouTube as a free audio transcription service. I first found out about this back in late 2020 when I was taking an online course. The professor uploaded their lectures to a private playlist, and I was looking for a method to quickly search through these lectures to create study notes. To download subtitles for every video in a YouTube playlist, you can run the following command. You can also do the same for an entire channel. For this example, I'll use my favorite podcast, The Tim Dillon Show. I'll first make a directory for the output files, cd into it, and run the command. Once everything is saved, you'll have a directory of .vtt files. The files are named after the video titles, with the video ID in brackets at the end. If we compare the number of files in the directory to the number of videos listed on the channel, we can see that it didn't save all the transcripts for every video. That's because creators sometimes forget to turn on auto-generated captions for their videos, so we can't really do much about that. Now let's say we want to find this specific clip from the channel. She's like, Tim, it's a real knife fight here in Malibu. I haven't felt since I found out my husband fucked my sister last Christmas. <laughs> it's a real knife fight here in Malibu. The only thing I ate last week was Adderall and grapefruit juice. It's a real knife fight. If we open the directory in an IDE like VS Code, we can use the search bar to find keywords. If we search for the phrase, it's a real knife fight, we get a couple results. When we open up one of the files in an editor, you'll see that the files are in an interesting format. They're web video text track files, web VTT, a standard file format for displaying captions on HTML5 videos. The captions are split up by these timestamps denoting the start and end of where something was said in a video. The web VTT files we downloaded have some added CSS styling, and for some reason repeat the caption with segmented timestamps. If we ignore all that, it essentially provides all the information needed to find exactly what video and timestamp something was set on the channel. By taking the video ID from the file name and inserting it into the YouTube URL, we get a link to the video. By converting the timestamps to seconds and plugging it into the query parameter T, we can move the playhead to the specific timestamp from our VTT file. Using this crude method, we have a way to search any channel on YouTube for keywords, albeit quite slowly. With the help of a little Python, regex, and SQLite, I made a command line tool to automate this entire process called YouTube FTS, or YouTube Full Text Search. You can install it with pip install yt-fts. After downloading a channel into your database using the download command with the channel URL as its argument, a new SQLite database named subtitles will be created in the same directory. You can see what channels you've saved by running the list command. To search a channel for keywords, use the search command, followed by the keywords you want to find. Then specify the channel, name, or ID. If you want to search in all channels, just use the all flag. If the tool finds anything, it will output the quote, video name, ID, and timestamp. On supported terminals, you can control click this quote, and it will open the link in a browser with the playhead starting where the quote was said. These searches can also be exported to a CSV file with the export command. Now the FTS in YouTube FTS stands for Full Text Search, which refers to the tool's implementation of SQLite's Full Text Search features. This provides added speed and flexibility to the search queries. You'll notice that when searching for phrases, you don't exactly have to match the order of the words to get a match from the database. For example, if I wanted to find this classic Theo Von bit, you know, and I've got the rib cage of a fucking large cat. And when I was born, the doctor said that I had the heart of a lesbian. And he, and he said that for years. And he said that he'd only ever said that to one other person. And that that man actually ended up dying, got hit by a, by a uh, Amtrak. I could run this search and it would turn up a match. And even if I take a couple words out and completely reorder them, it will still find the text I'm looking for. You can also use SQLite's advanced query syntax for more granular control, which is similar to regex but for search queries. After the project gained a little traction on Hacker News, some users suggested adding semantic search capabilities. Semantic search is currently a hot industry buzzword due to its overlap with the technologies that power AI like ChatGPT. Semantic search can be beneficial when you misspell a word or don't know the exact keywords you're looking for. I'm not going to pretend like I understand the complexities of building semantic search engines, but in a nutshell, rather than trying to match exact keywords with results, a semantic search engine tries to match 
meaning with results. To get this working on a project, first we need to associate the data set we want to search with embeddings, arrays of numbers generated by a language model trained to associate meaning with text. We then take a search query and convert it into an embedding with the same model, then compare it to every embedding in our searchable data set using the cosine similarity function. This function will give us a score indicating how similar two snippets of text are, and we return the snippets with the highest similarity score. Because the model is trained to search for meaning, it will return accurate results even if the user misspells the word or just describes the general idea of what they're looking for. Now there are a bunch of free and open source models to generate embeddings from, but because I failed linear algebra and all this research is so new, I figured I'd let time sort out which one is best for tinfoil hat users that don't want to send their search queries to external servers. For this project, I chose to use OpenAI's Text Embedding ADA model, available via their API. It's dirt cheap, and they provide a bunch of Python examples that I integrated into the project. To use it, set your API key as an environment variable and run the Generate Embeddings command with the channel flag pointing to the channel you want to generate embeddings for. Once done, use the Semantic Search command to semantically search that channel. A word of caution, though. SQLite databases are not meant for this, and search times will grow substantially for larger channels. This is partly because SQLite doesn't support a vector data type, which means we have to encode and decode all of our embeddings into blob data. For instance, a search on 3Blue1Brown's channel, which has over 100 videos, requires us to compare 46,000 embeddings and takes about 19 seconds to run. However, for smaller channels, it's a bit more practical. That being said, there are projects underway to enhance vector search with SQLite. To get semantic search at full text search speeds, we need to use dedicated platforms like Chroma or Tigris. These platforms provide vector databases optimized for semantic search, and I'll be delving into these when I build a front end for this project. Thanks for watching.